Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Uh, the first and foremost, recap the LSU game. Uh, obviously, very disappointed in the loss to LSU uh, in a road game in a very tough, tough environment. Uh, everything there was uh, as advertised from a uh, you know fan support and passion standpoint. Uh, definitely a uh, very, very impressive place to play. Uh, our defense continues to play very well, uh, keeping us in games and giving us every opportunity to win. Uh, ranked in the top ten in most categories. Uh, statistically, you know, number three in the country in score defense, so I thought uh, defense did a tremendous job <coughs> excuse me, throughout the course of the game. After a positive outing versus Auburn, uh, we took a step backwards offensively, moved the, well, moved the ball well on the ground for the most part, but that lacked any semblance of consistency or effectiveness in the pass game. It certainly can't turn the ball over four times and convert uh, two of 14 third down opportunities and expect to win. You know, obviously scoring three points isn't going to get the job done. Uh, and it's my job to get it fixed. Uh, special teams, we were solid overall. I think we need to improve our punting to help swing the field position and uh, win the hidden yardage battle. You know, that's something we took a lack, look at in our three, uh, three losses and our four wins. Did we win the explosive play battle? Did we win the turnover battle? And uh, where was the hidden yardage? And then the, uh, you know, our, our three losses, our drive start uh, was right around the 20 or less offensively. And, and, uh, you know, the opposition was at 35 or higher. Uh, so that's something where yards are at a premium. And, you know, with the punt game, we need to, you know, to obviously work to improve that. Uh, continuing to review, uh, the players of the week were scouts of the week. Uh, our student athletes of the week were Kylan Hill and Cam Gardner, two good in-state uh, you know, players for us there. Uh, from an injury standpoint, uh, Kylan Hill with a lower body still day-to-day. Keith Mixon has improved. He's still got a lower body, you know, day to day and working to get through things. And then Stu Reese also has a lower body and he's day to day. Uh, defensively, Brian Cole, you know, we were kind of optimistic about him last week. Uh, didn't make the progress that we wanted heading into the LSU game, uh, but it's still day to day with an upper body. Uh, and that kind of rounds out the injuries uh, from the LSU game. Uh, heading into uh, Texas A&M, obviously led by Jimbo Fisher, their head coach. Uh, four and two, uh, and 87 and 25 overall, ranked 16th or 17th in the polls. One of four active head coaches to win a national championship, and the offensive play caller for Texas A&M. Uh, their two losses on the year were to number two ranked Clemson at the time by two points, and to number one ranked Alabama. Uh, their coordinator on offense is Daryl Dickey. He coaches the quarterbacks, a mix of pro style and spread, uh, multiple personnel groupings and formations, averaging 32 points a game. Uh, very impressive from a yard standpoint, rushing for 204 and passing for 282. Uh, the quarterback, Kellen Mond, true dual threat guy, has thrown for 1,810 touchdowns. Uh, quick release, very accurate, can beat you with his legs as well. Uh, running back, Travion Williams, quick, explosive. He's a second leading rusher in the SEC. And then the tight end, uh, this guy's very, very impressive, Jake Sternberger, uh, ranked first in FBS among tight ends and receiving yards and touchdowns. Moving over to the defense, Mike Elko is our coordinator. You know, they play a four down front with a mixture of one and two high zones. Uh, ranked number two in the country in third down conversion defense. Number four in the country in rush defense, giving up only 81.6 yards a game. And fifth in red zone defense. Uh, top players are Justin Metabuike uh, on the D-line, number 52. Linebacker, Ataro Aleka, all right. Uh, he's number 42, six and a half tackles for loss. Very physical, very productive. And the uh, defensive back, number six, Donovan Wilson. 39 tackles, two for loss in the sack, and he is a defensive captain. Uh, on the special teams, uh, they're pretty simple, but they do a real, real great job with fundamentals and technique and production. Uh, they are 76% uh, uh, touchbacks on kickoff. Uh, their punter, uh, Brandon Mann, is averaging an astonishing 54.5 yards. A punt, he leads the country and has 12 kicks over 60 yards. Uh, so that's very impressive. The jersey number 12 on the special teams, Colin Gillespie. He's a game wrecker on every unit. He's got four tackles. And then the kick returner, Jay Sean Corbin, is doing an excellent job, though. Three returns, 49 yard average, and had a 100 yard touchdown uh, versus Arkansas. All right. Heading into the game, obviously, our kids uh, remain very upbeat and positive. Uh, we made the corrections and got a good head start on a uh, Texas A&M at yesterday's practice. Uh, defense for all the things we're doing, doing very, very well there. Uh, Coach Shoup and I have challenged them to elevate the unit from great to elite. 
And the way that we can help get that done is by creating more turnovers. Uh, you know, like I said, we're top 10 in the country in the majority of our statistical categories, 105th in the country right now creating turnovers. Uh, so that's something that we challenge them to do. Uh, special teams continues to improve. You know, focus, we're going to focus on winning the drive start battle. Uh, huge disparity there in the games we lost. Uh, continue to improve there, specifically the punting. Uh, offensively, we continue to run the ball well, you know, but we need to find a way to complement the pass game and keep defenses honest. Uh, our system has always been most effective when we can do both successfully. And when one is taken away, we can use the other side to pick up the slack. We absolutely, absolutely must find a way to generate more explosive plays while protecting the football and can't rely solely on the run game to, length, to uh, drive the length of the field because as a play caller, you know, it makes it, makes it very, very tough. And certainly understand, understand the frustration with our three losses uh, to three teams uh, with a combined record of 19 and three, I believe all ranked in or close to the top 10. I'm particularly disappointed with the performance of our uh, offense in these games, especially considering my track record of success on this side of the ball uh, relative to our lack of productivity. All right, so the thumbs at me. My job is to get it fixed and it will. Uh, we're exhausting every option and working diligently to make that thing happen. You know, uh, times like these, you know, after losses is usually when the suggestion box is full and the answer that you pull out is always right with the benefit of hindsight. Uh, you know, in the Kentucky and Florida losses, you know, the answer was we needed to run it more. Uh, you know, in the Auburn win, it was okay, you know, because we won even though we didn't pass it real well there. And then certainly with the LSU, you know, we need to pass it more, ball more effectively you know, even though we did run it for over 100 yards more than they were allowing. And ultimately, the, the criticism is warranted when we don't perform well. You know, we, we, to me, you can't be myopic. We've got to focus on the immediate, right, fixing what needs to be done right now to make sure this season turns out the way we want it to, and also understand what we're building towards. Uh, I love the culture of our program right now. The kids are bought in. They're doing everything we're asking them to do as it relates to the process. And, uh, you know, we're going to buy in, and, and certainly, uh, you know, was brought in here to elevate the, the, this program to a championship level and, uh, you know, build on the foundation, you know, the obviously excellent foundation laid by Coach Mullen and his staff. And uh, we're, we're, they're not mutually exclusive. We can talk about two things. We can talk about the urgency and necessity and the need for this staff to get it right now for this year and make sure this season ends the way it needs to end. Uh, and that's with a bunch of wins down the line. But at the same time, you know, talk about the things that we need to do from a culture standpoint to build this program uh, to the thing that we want in the long term. So I love our fans. I certainly understand and empathize with their frustration. I think their passion is what makes them great. Uh, and, and I appreciate their patience in making this happen uh, this year immediately and in the future long term. I expect another great turnout at uh, Davis Wade uh, as we bring another top 25 opponent in here at Texas A&M. So with that, any questions? You mentioned the field position yeah. battle earlier. Uh, obviously, punting and, and turnovers are going to contribute to that. When, when you all study the, the hidden yards, are there any other factors that are contributing to the lack of field position right now? Um, you know, the, the punt, punting for and punting against has been a big part of it. You know, certainly the offense extending drives, and when we do punt, punting from a distance that's you know, closer to the opposition's goal line, and the defense has been doing a, a better job creating more three and outs we have given up some drives, you know, but done real, real well in the compete zone and not given up touchdowns. So I think all of it kind of ties together, uh, you know, but, but, but a lot of it right now is, is uh, you know, we're, get, we're getting out punted uh, in teams, as you saw, I think we started two or three drives inside the five yard line against LSU. For how we're operating right now, you know, we, uh, uh, that makes it difficult to, to try the length of the field. Coach, so, I know when the offense has struggled the most Popper guy on campus as a backup quarterback, but uh, have you considered possibly shaking things up a little bit on that chart quarterback? Um, you know, I think we talked about that after the game that, you know, we sit in, we watch the film, and we talk about, you know, the depth chart at every position, uh, you know, not just a quarterback. I think that's probably the one that's most talked about and most visible because of the importance of it. Um, and, and, and for the struggles that Nick has had, you know, throwing the football, you know, I, I kind of have to. You know, credit him with the amount of times that he's rushed the ball and what he's done for us, uh, you know, to create yards and create points. But obviously, our struggles in the past game are apparent. Uh, and it doesn't just go to him. You know, when three, th three things need to happen for a pass game to be successful, you need to protect, you need to run good routes and gain separation, and the quarterback needs to throw the ball accurately. And unfortunately, right now, you know, all, not all three of those things are, are clicking. 
but to answer your question, you know, we have discussed in the offensive staff room, you know, not making a change, but, uh, you know, during the first half and second half, you know, giving the KT an opportunity to start a drive for two reasons. As a change of pace to give him an opportunity because he's a talented player. And secondly, uh, you know, to take some of the physical wear and tear off of Nick, who's, you know, got 121 carries right now in six games and he's a fifth, fifth leading rusher in the SEC. Kind of going off that, when you talk about evaluating personnel, it, are the quarterbacks being evaluated just like, say, the starting quarterback and the backup quarterback are being evaluated, or is that something you've taken a closer look at in recent weeks? Uh, I don't know necessarily a closer look at in recent weeks, and, and obviously, you know, uh, you know, production kind of necessitates uh, the lens in which you look at it, and, and you know, like it or not, the quarterback position is one that receives more credit than it deserves when you, you do well and more blame than it deserves when you, uh, you know, don't form up the expectation level. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we evaluate all the positions the same, but certainly I think we could all agree that quarterbacks, you know, a little bit different in scope. Coach, uh, when, you, when you say on film, hey, then what, what impresses you the most with Kellen Mond and what he's able to uh, lead his offense down the field and just move the ball? I think from a, uh, you know, passing standpoint, his quick release, his accuracy, his delivery, uh, kind of the command of the offense, but he's also a guy, uh, you know, like we do in our run game. He, he, he gives you the, extra, the benefit of being uh, kind of that extra number in the run game with some zone reads and some things like that. You know, they're a combination of pro style and spread, so they're able to do both. Very, very impressive player. The four interceptions that Nick threw the other night, was there a common theme among them, or were they all kind of individually? I'd say they were probably a little bit different. Uh, you know, the first one, we had a little bit of pressure. You know, they had a, a, an interior blitz, Colin cut the guy, and, you know, they kind of sidestep and threw behind the crosser. Uh, you know, laid on a couple of the other ones. I'd say that's probably the, the common theme on the last three. Coach, out here. Elder Jenkins seems to really be giving you what you need at center. It seems like he's making all the snaps. Just evaluate his performance. Oh, very good. Senior year, though. We've seen on some, uh, kind of some of the draft uh, boards that they have him ranked as one of the top centers in the country. And I think that's uh, very warranted. You know, he does a great job making all the calls. Great communication with the interior three guys. Uh, has done a good job in the run game. You know, as you can see, we've been able to do that very successfully. And there's been pretty stout protection too. So that done a fine job for us. Coach, in early in the year, you said you kind of want to stick with a wide receiver group. Has there been any thought to kind of shaking that rotation up a little bit after assessing the film against LSU? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, I don't know how much more shake there is left. I mean, most of those guys are, are getting playing time. You know, at the X position. You know, Gidry and Jesse are rotating there. You know, Osiris is getting a bunch of snaps along with Jesse at the Z. And we're playing three slots. So, uh, like I said, it's all those things go together. You know, in the past game, we gotta, you know, got to protect, got to run good routes, got to get separation, got to deliver the ball. Nick mentioned after the game, there's there's something missing in the past game from the past from the practice field to game days. Other than just general precision and execution, what is missing in the passing game? The disconnect. Yeah. You would say? Yeah, the disconnect. I, I think it probably goes along with the three things I just mentioned. The getting all, all three of those things working at the same time, the protection, the, the, the routes, and the, and the accuracy. Obviously, you continue to, to stick with Nick. Is he noticeably better than Keaton in practice? Is there a pretty big disparity there? I wouldn't say big disparity, but better in practice, yes. When y'all did the, the self-scout in, in the bye week, are, are teams playing more man than zone against y'all? Actually, LSU played a bunch more zone than they normally play, and I think that had something to do with us, our run game against Auburn and some of the fits and things that, that happened like that. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing, and I you know, looked over it in the office, looked it over again on the plane on the way there, you know, first and second down, we're 70% run and 30% pass right now. So, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, for us to be as successful as we want and how this op offense has operated at its peak level of productivity is when we're able to do both successfully. And, you know, right now we're, we're – you know, we're one-dimensional. I mean, we're running the ball very, very well. And, uh, you know, we need to find a way to create more explosive plays uh, in addition to the ones we're doing in the run game with the pass game. Because it, it's just it's just difficult, unless you're a triple option offense, to call runs the entire way down the field and expect to sustain that level of, uh, you know, effectiveness throughout the course of the game. we we got to find a way to pass the ball better. Now, how does man coverage impact what y'all want to do in, in the screen game and the quick game and otherwise? In the pass game? Yeah. I mean, I, I think when people play press, it eliminates the term we use access, that there's not, you know, real quick throws uh, on the edges that you can kind of get out of your hand. I don't know that it does much to the screen game, but, you know, when teams are playing press, what it does is takes away some of the quick throws. Is, is the 
is the, the offense is built in answer to that to go downfield with one on ones, or is there more than that? No, there's more than that. I mean, there, there's quick game answers where we're, you know, man side of the route, the zone side of the route, you know, some screens and things like that. You know, we threw a couple in the, in the game, but um, like I said, the combination of quick game screens, you know, we definitely got to do a better job in our in intermediate pass game and then taking advantage of our shots down the field, which we called a couple, and I mean, quite frankly, a couple of them were, were wide open. We, we just, we didn't hit them. <laughs> so, you know, those are the ones that we've got to hit, you know, for its offense to look like it's supposed to. Common, th <clears throat> excuse me, common theme in the three SEC losses versus the win over Auburn is the running backs not getting into double digit carries. What's the, the biggest difference when the, those three games versus the Auburn games that's, that allowed the running backs to participate more? I think Colin was fixing to. I mean, I think it was six or eight going into the half, and he had, you know, a couple right there in the third quarter as we saw what they were doing. So I think if that game had continued and Colin had, had stayed in, you know, he'd have been a, a you know, high teens, low 20s carry. Uh, but as it got to the, uh, you know, latter stages of the second half and they were sustaining drives and we were behind, you know, that kind of, kind of took the air out of the ball a little bit. We had to, you know, throw it around. I don't say throw it around, that's probably hyperbole. We had to, to throw it more than we normally do particularly on the last round. Just for you personally, is this kind of uncharted territory for you to, for your offense to, uh, in your career to have this kind of a stretch of three or four games when it, when it hadn't really, things haven't clicked? Have you had an experience like this before? Uh, as a coordinator, a head coach calling the plays, uh, not so much in, uh, at Penn State, you know, maybe the first three coming out of the gate, maybe four. Uh, but we'll, it was kind of probably mirrored to you know, the level that we had here. Uh, you know, the couple, we did decent against Kent, had a good outing against uh, uh, Pitt, you know, struggled struggled against Michigan, struggled a little bit against Minnesota, and then kind of got going. You have to go back to Akron or uh, to UConn at the very tail end of my uh, last season there as a coordinator. Uh, you know, we, we, we had we were having trouble passing the ball, and we ran it very well. We had, you know, I think the leading rusher in the Big East, one of the tops in the country, but we just – we weren't throwing the ball very well at that point, so there, there haven't there haven't been many instances of it, but uh, you know, it, it has happened in the past. Like 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 the most coordinators who've done it for 20 years, you know, there, there's going to be times and stretches where this happens. Obviously, everyone would like to block out the rumblings and everything that you hear, but sometimes it's hard to. How do you think Keaton Thompson has handled the? sort of weird situation that he's been in, you know, people calling for his name, but obviously Nick is the guy that you guys are rolling with right now. How do you think he's handled that? Yeah, he, Keaton's handled it very well. I mean, he uh, he works very hard at practice. He prepares very well. You know, the game he had an opportunity to come in against the, our FCS opponent, you know, he did a very good job there. And, you know, he, uh, you know, I've been in his shoes and it's uh, something I think he's done a very, very good job of, of preparing well and being ready to be, uh, Headed into the game when his number's called, but at the same time not, uh, you know, being a distraction to the to, to the quarterback or to the offense or to the team. Yes. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Have a great.